Obviously, uh, it was quite a rapid progression then, um, from, from playing uh, perhaps at the local level to start to play for the national team. Um, can you just share something of the, the thrill of having that talent recognised and eventually get your first cap for Wales? How did it feel then? Uh, well, before the first cap came, uh, there were lots of sort of, uh, I wouldn't call it hard tape, but a lot of sort of times where you're pretty low because because of the you know the, the want and the urgency to to succeed then you know overstep the mark on numerous occasions there was sort of certain amount of, of things that had to be put on side because you know I was really driven at the time and, and you know there were, you have academy systems now and I probably came through despite the system then not because but I just felt uh, you know a big push to really go for it and you know and a few times where I'd, I'd served a lot of rugby bands myself I'd been sent off for six and ten weeks and you know it looked at one point that I'd probably be sort of not fulfilling my rugby sort of uh, dream really but no I kept pushing on and uh, I can always remember <laughs> how the game was changing I think I was digging a trench uh, in Pontypridd Park and there's an Hallett Park when I had the call to to say that I'd been selected for Wales. Our, our rugby has changed really. Uh, that uh, it was a Friday afternoon and I was picked, I think, to play for Wales against France in the, in the first Fredlake game. And uh, I can tell you, I stepped out of trench pretty quickly went home and, uh, <laughs> and rested up, put some gel on, and uh, <laughs> ready for the game. But no, uh, but no, it was. That, that, that was the first time I was selected for Wales, but before that, I'd been picked on the bench and never went on. So that was a year before that, and I really thought, well, I, I'm not going to get to where I wanted to go playing wise. But then, you know, that, that was it. That was, and, and it's like anything, I suppose, when you first play, it's, it's getting used to dealing with the, the emotions. So, if I'm honest, the first cap was great, but I didn't just want the first cap because I think. Being sort of just playing for Wales was just the start. And I think sometimes, like in life, we set up standards to get there. And I think sometimes, you know, people say, oh, I save all my life to get there. And get, when you actually get there and find out, it doesn't really fulfill what you think it will. And uh, I was very blessed and had the, you know, the, the, the wisdom and, the, and, you know, whatever you call it, to push on and, and keep striving to. To, to you know, achieve my sort of rugby dreams. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, as a player. Uh, oh, no, no, we <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Everybody's a fucking challenge, uh, <laughs> No, not me. Anyway, uh, as a player, uh, you were known as a very formidable opponent. Um, I mean, how much of an edge do you believe is essential for a rugby player? Um, and discipline and, and toughness to be a professional rugby player? Um, I think you've got to be competitive, and I think, you know, if, I, if I'm honest, I suppose if I'd been a little bit more disciplined and, you know, where I am now as a, as a, uh, as a Christian, I think, I'm sure that I would have been a far more successful rugby player, you know, and I think that would be questionable when people say, oh, well, you know, but I think that uh, I would have been inwardly stronger and, I, 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 you know, over the recent years, you reflect and you can say that, and, and, and sometimes you've got to be honest with yourself. And I think I would have. I think, you know, I think, you know, we, we, we've all been blessed with certain strengths. You know, some are quick, some are tough, some are, you know, not tough and fighting, but you know, we've all been blessed with different uh, qualities. And I think really, if I had a little percentage more discipline on times. That, uh, because I, I, I believe that I did carry discipline in a few situations which, you know, I could go on about them all night, you know, being kicked and punched sometimes, having to turn into but yeah. in, in a contact sport, it's inevitable, but I always wanted to win and I still want to win, you know, because, because I don't sort of roll over, but I, I feel that I have uh, a certain amount of integrity knows that, that it makes me a better person and doesn't take crime from, um, 
you know, my competitiveness, unfortunately, I'm 42, about five stone overweight, so I'll, I'll never be able to sort of put that to the test as a player, but um, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of challenging opportunities in, 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 in years to come, I trust they'll, uh, they'll, I'll be tested on them. Yeah, I mean, in reflection on that, uh, I mean, how much of that sort of determination um, and toughness did roles into your life, your spiritual life? Um, well, I think it's, it's, it's a long journey. I mean, like I, I grew up on a little Sarah. Sarah. I know right there was probably can vaguely remember me at, uh, at a time in school where uh, I was a pretty much a non-attender. And, um, you know, like I said, because I was pretty sort of wild as Initially not, I always went to, you know, if I can go on, I went to Sunday school and uh, my uncle uh, was a sort of, you know, a, uh, a Welsh Baptist minister in Ammonford called uh, a chap called Noel Williams uh, who had originated from Guelph, my own uncle, see. And uh, so I had always been brought up to go to Sunday school and my father took me and I went to Sunday school and obviously I was pretty good at sport and do boxing and different things. Um, you know, I think I succumbed to peer pressure and I know that youngsters, you know, there's a lot of pressure out there to, to impress uh, our peers and I think that, right, that runs right through adult, adulthood really and, uh, you know, we see it in my walk of life, I see it in, you know, where you think when you're in the national squad that everything is rosy, but there's still peer pressure there. We still, you know, um, how can I say, get caught in the, the trap of it and worry about uh, what other people got. I mean, take our eye off the, you know, the, the race that we're in then, if you like. And I think I turned away, really rebelled as a 13-year-old and really went uh, off the rails then to, to put it in uh, sort of um, a more sort of, uh, sort of understandable too. I uh, went off the rails and I, I got thrown out of school and I found myself in a, in a place for about four or five months, uh, which, you know, pretty frightening place uh, where youngsters, you know what I mean, who don't go to school. And I never sort of broke into anywhere or stole anything, but I just made a statement in my mind that I didn't want to go to school. And I sort of rebelled against my parents and put them through a tough time and I sort of found myself off in a place like a school for well naughty children then really which was quite an environment that poof, a, a big wake up call I think I am not this I'm not this person that you know what I mean yeah. I really know I'm and I don't don't want, really want to be here and I can always remember and, you know, people say, oh, you've finished playing and, oh, too many bumps on the end, you become a Christian. But my sort of, my walk had started long before, if you know what I mean, that's when yeah. my downtime, as we all do, that's the time I was spending in prayer as a 12, 13 year old, praying to God for help. And, you know, when I look back, without sort of going through any sort of rut ball, scrum, line out, forward pass, Thus, when you know, or oh, I trust that, that God has been with me all through my life, and you say, well, or oh, oh, you just, people will say, well, oh, you, you worked hard, you've got good determination, but you know yourself, when you're in a quiet period, when you pull the sheets over your head, what, what has gone on in your life, and I, and I think how blessed I've been to be, you know, being able to represent Wales, and even now, and I'm not saying, oh, I'm, I'm what's it in? Onassis, a multi-millionaire, but I, I really feel blessed with everything I've got. Yeah. And I think it's, and when you go, and like I've seen things and I've seen, you, you go and you see, be, be very blessed to have been to travel the world and you see places like the Bahamas. Yes, they're lovely places, it's great, but then they still, you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't fill the void, I feel, that, that, that was always there then, really. And I just feel very blessed, you know, especially the last couple of years, to, to experience the, you know, the warmth and love that they have, have done all along, but really it's come to prominence the last couple of years.